Well, hello everybody. We are back working on the old Ford again. This thing has been on the road for quite a while now, no real issues. Once it gets warmed up, idles a little rough, need to dial the carburetor in a little bit more. But then here in the last month or so, it's been overheating when it idles. Doesn't completely overheat, but then starts getting pretty hot. And if you sit and let it just idle for a while, it'll really start going. Once you get going on the road again, cools back down though. So it seemed like either a fan issue or radiator, which this has a fixed fan. So it's not like a clutch fan or anything going out. So I figured it had to be radiator, which this thing's set for years before I bought it. So I drained all the fluids out and I hooked a garden hose up to it and just flushed the radiator real good before I hooked everything up. Apparently that wasn't good enough because when I went to check this, the fluid and everything in it was just brown and almost muddy. And then I don't know if you can see this, but all this crud all through it. So I'm guessing all that rust and sediment was just rock solid in there. So when I was flushing, it really wasn't doing anything. And now after months of driving it, it just broke free circulating through. So I've drained it and went to Summit and picked up a new aluminum radiator. And I'm gonna get that put in here. But I will say I found one other issue while I was investigating this. All right, so under the hood here, I came out here, took some measurements, and went to find my radiator, and none of the measurements matched up with any of the options for one of these. Which, if you watch my old videos when I was getting the engine going, I had trouble getting the right radiator hose to match up, and I thought it was an issue whether the version with AC versus not. Now I found what the real issue was. So if you measure this radiator, it is much larger than any of the ones available. Once I got to really measuring, I looked down in here. And if you see this flat spot right here, this should be where the radiator would be mounted. So the radiator should be about two inches this way and a little bit narrower. Hi. So that at least explains why the radiator hoses weren't lining up. So now I got the proper radiator for it, which will, I mean, helps move it away from the fan, get some of those tighter bends out of the radiator hoses and the sizes should be a little bit more appropriate. So I got this drained already. I'm gonna go and rip the radiator out and get started on it. See, this is the downside of you taking all your stuff to the storage unit. <laughs> yep. Well, I thought I was done with truck projects. <laughs> You're never done. <laughs> I had a 12. There's a 12. There's thunder. Next round of storms is coming. Yep. You might not be able to work on this much longer. I don't think you're going to be doing this much longer. Nope. Trying to get this done all weekend, but the house is on the market right now. So yesterday we had three or four showings, so couldn't get to it. Then it's rained all morning. We're in a gap right now, but now it's starting to thunder again. So I might see if I can get these bolts out of the radiator, but if not, this will be a tomorrow thing or maybe this evening if I get lucky. All right, well, rain's cleared out. Before the storms hit, I was able to at least get everything loosened up. So I should be able to just lift this thing out of here now. Maybe. Oh, wait, nope, one more thing. I'd loosened the transmission lines, but hadn't taken them completely out.
radiator's out. And the old telltale sign of a junkyard radiator. Definitely gonna be prettier. So I just gotta get these transmission fittings switched over and then mount her back in. And just like that, I'm done for the day. So popped the fittings off the old one for the transmission lines. And I went and got an adapter to get everything to work with my stainless lines when I did this the first time. And of course, not the same size here. So I'll figure out what size the fittings are on this radiator and then adapt them over. So another trip to summit but it's what these old trucks are so wrap this up for the day and we'll go get those fittings and pick up from there So just the radiator in there anyway, figured it's just sitting around. So just this week sometime, go to Summit, get those fittings for the transmission lines, pop those on, and this thing will be back on the road hopefully. All right, so just got back from Summit, back under the hood of this thing. So I said I was needing transmission fittings. Had this fitting for the transmission. Then my old radiator had this adapter to go to the 6AN or whatever it is, fitting for the transmission line. So now, I have just this, much simpler. So I'm gonna crawl under, put these on, get the transmission lines back on. Then I'm gonna go and change the thermostat since I had all that crud circulating through it. And then we'll be able to get this thing back on the road and see what it does. Is it the thermostat you're working on? I'm trying to. Hmm. Problem is a racking wrench doesn't get around this bolt. You can't get a socket to it. And you can only turn a wrench about a quarter turn or you know, a quarter of a turn at a time. And if you use the box inside, it gets trapped in there once it comes loose. It's gonna be pretty. Pretty, pretty. You didn't see that through the grill really <laughs> good. Come on. Mm, this one I was afraid of. It wasn't the hose wouldn't fit. Well, I sized everything off the old radiator. And their old radiator wasn't the right radiator. Correct. So that means that the hoses aren't probably aren't the right oh. hoses. I don't think that'll go that way. Yeah. 
Well, poopy. Poopy indeed. <laughs> Seeing if I can get it to come around it. Mate. Mm. I'm afraid it'll blow out though. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, this is going to be another day's project. Everything's in, bolted down. The only thing is the radiator hoses. So when I had the other radiator in there, when I got this thing on the road, I had to kind of fish around to find hoses that fit right. And they weren't matching up right because it was the wrong radiator. But now the hoses I have don't match up to this radiator. So I'm going to have to go to town and get the right hoses and then slap those on. And we'll be good to go. And we're back again. So... The hoses for this thing have turned it a little bit more of a headache than I expected. I mean, I should have known, but no one stocks any of these hoses for these old trucks. So you have to order everything in to check them. Luckily, O'Reilly ordered like five, six different hoses in for me without me paying for them. Then I took mine in, matched a couple up. The upper one I got right first time. The lower one, I can't find anything that fits. So I'm having to get a little bit creative. Because the way the lower one's routed, has to go, like have a real tight bend to go around the power steering pump belt and then back all the way forward to where the radiator's at. The bend in the one I had is right, it's just not long enough to get to the radiator. So came up with a little bit of a solution. So decided to extend the same hose I already started with. Needed to move three, four inches further out in the straight section. So went and got some one and three quarter exhaust pipe and then just had this ring welded on to hold the hose clamp. So I'm gonna put that in there, extend it, clamp it real good, and hopefully that does it. So I'll crawl under here and show you how I'm doing this. So here's the bend around the power steering belt. But you can see the gap in that to get it to sit flush. So I'll just put this in there. And done. So with the right parts, it took about five minutes to put back together. So I'm gonna put antifreeze in it and test drive it. So just go back to the recycling center. It's about a 10, 15 mile loop. Truck did real good, didn't overheat. The only thing I will say, this thing fires up perfect when it's cold. Mm -hmm. And then under load, it rides fine. But once it gets fully up to temperature, if you let it idle, it just idles real rough. I have one theory on what's causing it, but I gotta have time to dig into that. But that'll be the next thing on it. Then after that, just a few odds and ends to keep going on this thing and still waiting for the house to sell, so a lot of stuff dictates on that. But if you're enjoying, make sure to like, subscribe, do all that, and stick with us. We'll have a lot more coming. See you guys on the next one.